Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. So this is the part three on how you can create the input component on Figma and add it to your design system. Before, uh, so there's only one thing you're learning, which I, in the last video I promised, I, I, I will show you how you can create um, an underlined input instead of a background one. So before doing so, let's go ahead and test our input. So, I'm gonna find my input on components, zoom in a little bit, and as you can see, um, I can change the icon alignment to both, right only, left only, you can add hints to it, you can change the state to error, or the field, or again default, or hover, you can change the left icon if it's both, if the icon uh, exists on both sides. You can change both, we can change the text here, so on and so forth. Also, if I change the width here, we can see it gets dynamically updated. But yeah, so far, so we created this one. And also, we added the different sizes of it. Right? All right. So for this video, I'm going to show you how you can actually create the underlying version of your inputs. So I'm going to select the input component, add another variant. Before doing so, actually, let's increase the left and right padding here just a little bit. I saw that it doesn't go that well. So let's go ahead and select this one, change it to 20. Yep. Also, the the default one and again here change it to 20. all right now i can sleep much better and let's go ahead and create another variant and call it underline underline the value is going to be false <coughs> sorry so i'm just going to duplicate all of these here and the value for the underlines for this one is going to be true. And bear with me, what I'm going to do right now is a little bit <clears throat> sort of weirder than usual. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, let's go ahead and select these ones. Actually, the one, all of them. In order to access them better, I want to change the background color to, to one thing. So, because we don't need the whites here. So, let's change it to default subtle. All right, now they are all the same color. I can select them one, you know, completely on white, on by one click. So, this is the default subtle one. Let's click on it. And now what I'm gonna do is change the border radius actually to zero, right? And, Let's remove all the all the stroke from them. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is actually add another stroke to all of them and change it to border default. But um, the twist here is actually let's change it to two. Is that I'm gonna select this one. This this that says strokes per side so this didn't exist in figma a couple of months back but they brought it here it's basically just like css and now you can select the the border sides actually which is super cool so for the underline i'm gonna go with the bottom one all right now you can see that um we actually have underline and to actually complete it what I'm going to do is remove the background so it can be transparent. All right. The only thing left to do is just style these. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is the hover one. Let's go ahead. Actually, let's go select the hovers all by one in all sizes. So when we apply some changes, it's going to apply all together. So it's going to be border default. I'm gonna change the border default to border uh, border default subtle. By the way, this is the new variable I just added. 
all right and maybe we can also add a little bit of background so it looks a little bit cooler so default subtle here too yeah and then for the this is gonna be the typing one again select it here and here so you can style it all together I'm gonna change the so let's go select this one I'm gonna change the border to something very darker like this and also the background color can be white which is the transparent one but um, yeah let's let's keep it transparent actually and the next one is this one which is okay and let's go ahead and style the error ones not this one it's like this and it's gonna be error on the borders I want to find the default one and voila and let's go with the success one what I'm gonna do select the border again go on the stroke and find the success and add it here all right now as you can see we have created all of the variants that we listed here and our text input creation is complete let's go ahead and test them input here so I want the input to be medium easy actually I'm gonna align these after the video uh, in order you know in a good order so for example the small should be on the top of medium not the not in the middle anyhow so I want to change the place so actually I'm going to change the state to typing voila I'm going to add a hint to it there you go I'm going to add two icons to it right here what I'm going to do I'm going to change the placeholder to something like username enter that's it and for example payam or like this hint goes here like username you know something a hint actually <laughs> but yeah then let's change it to underline boom done again um, let's go to success the state can be success voila or it can be um, error like this user exists this user name already exists something like that or let's go with hover like so actually it got reset which is okay it, it, it removed the it removed the value because the har our harvest state is actually when you haven't selected the input so that's okay but if I go back to like field there you go so this is the default state and if I go back to the square one voila so this is a super cool way to have your components all stored in your design system so you can use them in future um, for more videos subscribe to my channel please uh, let me know what you think on the comment section below and a like to the video is a huge help and also on the next video I'm gonna show you how you can create text areas and other input types and add it to your design system but yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you around. Cheers.